Welcome to another episode of Account Reviews. Today we have a Mockman account that is struggling to make progress. He has two Transcendence heroes, so I want you now to imagine what you think a Mockman account with two Transcendence heroes should look like. And then we're going to start addressing some of the key issues that this account has and some of the mistakes he's made that you guys hopefully won't repeat if you ever try to build a Mockman as an early game or mid game player. Let's start off. We have a level 235 VIP3 account with 9 billion gold, that's a lot of gold, and 15,000 gems, which I'm assuming was spent in the Lunatic Asylum? Yeah, so we did come into this event with 35,000, and now it's only 15. That, that's okay. This is understandable. We're in a good spot. So far, so good. Looking at the glory challenge, this is not normally where I start, but this is very informative for anyone wanting to build someone like Mockman as their main hero. Ideally, you want this done. And my word, has he gone all the way? He has. He's done the middle row here for Tree of Origin 3, which is normally the minimum you'd want for a Mockman, because that takes you up to Tree of Origin 5. But he's gone and done almost everything apart from Abyss. Wow. So first things first, hats off to the guy who owns this account, He's done some good stuff before committing to his team. Now, it would have been a lot better if he went with Abyss here, but I do know there are people out there that unpurposely troll and don't actually finish this. Uh, I don't know why, they just do. And actually, funnily enough, I read his account, like, sign-up sheet, and he said one thing he was annoyed about was that he was like, look, I'm sorry, MK, I had to regress one of my Transcendence heroes to make progress elsewhere. I'm like, dude, that's a good thing. You regressed one of your Transcendence heroes and did the glory challenge. That's not a mistake. I look at the bag. I'm not seeing 5 million crystals just lying around. You rebuilt whoever it was or did whatever you needed to do. This is all good. So I am liking this account. Yes, 25 soul symbols isn't a lot, but you've done the glory challenge. So I wouldn't expect you to have a lot of soul symbols right now. You are in a great spot. Good amount of scrolls. Good amount of eggs. Stellar Shards is nice. Star Spawn Materials is nice. This guy's account, looking good. So what are the heroes actually like? Well, as expected, we have a Tree of Origin 5 Mockman. Seems good. Let's have a little look. Oh no. I mean... Oh. That's... That's special. He did the active. He did the passive two, but he went for the basic attack instead of the last passive. Now, granted, there is a bit of a weird thing about the last passive, which is that you only want to upgrade the first three. But it's unusual that he's not touched this. Now, there's one of two reasons he's not touched this. Either it's because he doesn't have any sublimation, or... It's because he wanted to prioritize the basic attack. Now, granted, there are occasions when the basic attack is worth going for. So I don't see this as a terrible thing. It's only bad if he's actively avoided using sublimation. No, he hasn't. Okay, this is passable. We like we like it. We like it. We like it. This is fine. This is fine. Just your next three sublimation levels should really be his passive. So you ran out. We're okay. 1.7 million on Mockman. Not a lot of attack. So maybe maybe it's a problem? What's our issue here? We got crit crit attack. We got melodic strings. What's our crit damage? 65%. That's that's low. Right. This passive grants us 50% when he's on the back line. That takes us to 105. You use Phoenix, which takes us to 125. And then are you using Rogan? No. So where are you getting your extra 25% crit damage from? And he has no Awaken. This is a weird Mockman. Very weird Mockman. And you say train. No, if it was in the treasure train, it would show up on these stats. So that's really odd. I would... Whoa, what? HP? Vitality? Uh, is this... Okay, either you were doing something where you had to have a tanky Mockman, or you did not build this guy for damage. Normally, 
in almost all circumstances, that's how you build a mock man. That is definitely how you build a Mockman. Like, Raven's right. There are some instances where tanky Mockman's good, but you'd put a crown on him at that point. And no Unbending Will? Uh, technically, yes. Unbending Will is a weird one. If you don't die, sometimes Balance Strike's good. Like, if you're never triggering Unbending Will. Also, if you just need as much damage as possible in that first active, then also consider Balance Strike, because you do gain a little bit of extra damage. Which is nice. And some healing too, which is quite critical. So, there is an argument to switch between these two, but when in doubt, Unbending Will is good. So, yeah, it, it's worth experimenting between those two. It depends what you're fighting. Now, at this point, I still think there's got to be a way you could squeeze out a little bit of extra crit damage. But you have crit, holy damage, damage reduction. Okay, okay. The way you want to build a mock man, this goes for anybody. In early game, it is as much damage as possible. And the pure damage builds, like, we would even then at that point just go balance strike. we go full send with everything possible. So we'd say, okay, look, do we have crit damage here? Yes, we do. That's going to take us up to 125%. Now, that's arguably way too much crit. So maybe we'd want to tone that down a little bit. Or you could even argue, actually, I want to run attack, attack, holy damage. Or attack, attack, skill damage as a stone for him. So that would be pretty worthwhile. Another really good skill on him is skill damage. So if you have a way of upping your skill damage, that's probably worth doing. But at this point, because he's giving himself 50% crit, it's kind of wasted to go with that crit imprint. So I am actually going to take that crit damage imprint off, and I'm going to slap on skill damage just for maximum damage output. And um, yeah, it seems like sitting at 65 is the thing we need to do. Now, what would be way better is if in the treasure train... Did we get the uh, the fancy item that increases crit? Where is it? Where is it? It's in the festival stuff. He did! 10% <gasps> crit damage. Nice. This is really good. This is really, really good. So, okay, that's given us a bit of crit damage. I like that. I like that. It's not terrible. I would just probably want a Rogan here to squeeze out that last bit of crit damage. Now, granted, you can't use that in Void Campaign, but it would work everywhere else. Realm's Gate, it would work. Void Vortex... A lot of places where you need him to burst as hard as possible. I would get a Rogan in on this account. Now, our next hero to talk about, we got Jara here. Now, Jara's great, especially if you've got a B-Stone. Now, granted, you don't want armor skill damage as bonus stats. You want control immunity offset. The main reason you want B is for that. And also control precision if you can slap that on. The basic upgraded, uh, no, no. That's mm, just not a good idea, really. When it comes to Jara... You don't want to waste sublimation like this. This is just pretty foolish and suboptimal. What you would rather do is just put your sub chest into the active skill and leave it. Wouldn't go any further. If you were going to upgrade something else on it, it's Void Infusion. But I would say make sure you finish Mockman first and done the three upgrades on this, leaving the last one because the Noble Sublimation isn't worth it. That's, that's way better. And then, of course, we've got Eloise here as a tenant too, which is nice. That's fine. She's a tenant. She's got good armor. She's attack, attack, skill damage. You'd rather attack, attack, but it's probably a dust issue. You've still got a lot of dust. Maybe you could try and get a better stone on there. And then, yeah, that's trying to get as much damage as you can with Mockman. We lack a few other tenants. And, and funnily enough, Sarge is not... What? Mm, okay, is Sarge a tenant in place of where Jara is? Is that why Sarja's not in here? Yes. Okay, so Sarja isn't needed. So in that case, we need Onkiramaru, which you haven't got. You need to get Onkiramaru. And then you've got a dark hero problem. You need Mockman or Forkus. Now, typically Forkus is the better one. He's got a skin, but it's easier to get a bit better awakened Mockman if you're a spender and you can buy one. You are lacking either of those things. Now... I would happily use this E5 carry and replace her. You keep all the carry copies, but you can swap to a better hero. That is then, of course, going to be good for you as a tenant. That would be Forkus. You've got one, two, three, four copies of Forkus here. So maybe try and get more Forkuses. Maybe it's Mockman, right? Let's look at your chests. Do you have a bunch of Transcendence chests or chests in general? No. So you're low on chests. Okay. So you really do want to get that hero in. Uh, and as we said, the other one is on Kiramaru. I'm imagining you have fed 
on Kirimaru's in your time, or you've just been really unlucky and never got any. And you said you swapped Drake for Mockman. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. Swapping your Dark Hero out for the Mockman is perfectly fine. The only issue with building Mockman early is you really do only have enough food for two Dark Heroes. And this is what leads me on to my next point. Typically, if you're a Mockman user, jumping on Jara is only good if you're a whale. Because what you're hoping to do is get a stronger tenant for that Mockman to give as much attack as possible to that Mockman. And typically you'll have like an A-tier Mockman as well. If you're a whale, you'll get like an A-tier Mockman straight away. And therefore you don't care about helping that Mockman survive. Because his attack stat will just be ginormous. That your way of beating campaign is just wrecking. If you're a budget player though, and you want a Mockman, you can't rely just on the raw power a Jara brings. Now, therefore, some would say, oh, run a Rui Scepter on Jara. Get that crowd control in. That doesn't work. Because Jara needs to be energy fed to really get the most out of her active skill. If you look here, if she comes in with 200 energy, you then are able to go ahead and get twice the crowd control chances against your opponents. Unfortunately, you have no energy feed at all, which means, unfortunately, that Jara cannot get that kind of power. So what you would do, actually is just give her a flag if you were going to be running her on the side. Just to give her even more stats to that Mockman. But that's not even your best choice. Your best choice would be to just build Aspen. Now granted, we don't have a lot of Aspen copies, so that's not an option. But if it was, if you're an early player looking to build Mockman, Aspen as your second Transcendence hero is crazy. Even today, a friend of mine was like, hey, can you help me with my Idol Heroes account? And she has a Mockman and a just-built Aspen. It was like, what do I even use Aspen for? Well, for her and for you guys, let me explain. The thing that makes Aspen so good is he is able to crowd control even with a basic attack. It puts Fear Abyssal Gaze on the back row heroes he hits. 60% chance to inflict that. So if you add to that a Ruji Scepter, it's coming in stronger. It's ignoring control immunity. It is going to fear those backline heroes. Another really cool thing about Aspen, when he does fear people, he feeds himself energy. And you might only see 10 energy here. That doesn't sound like a lot. But once you get this guy upgraded, that becomes 20 energy. And then it gets even higher once you take him in the Tree of Origin because it becomes 25. And if you hit two heroes with that, that's 50 energy for him, which means he can go from zero energy, do a basic attack, and give himself 100 so he's, instead of doing basic, basic, active, he's doing basic, active, basic, active, basic, active, literally on his own back. And that is why Aspen is so good in stuff like Aspen Dungeon. Not to mention the Fear of Missile Gaze locks down opponents. But that also, that, that, that self-energy feed alongside the crowd control is reducing enemies' ability to attack you whilst also giving good damage pressure. If you go ahead and upgrade his Noble Sublimation, he can Fear Abyssal Gaze the targets he hits with his active as well. So that way you've got a two-way combo of his basic and his active putting out that Fear Abyssal Gaze, which then means you have more crowd control to allow your Mockman more rounds to live, do more active skills, and kill opponents. That's why we like Aspen as an early hero. Now granted, you could say, just like JX said in chat there, Aspen hits like a truck, true. But that's why you run Aspen as your main hero. In this case, we're just running him for his control and his support to your team. So that would have been my choice as your second Transcendence hero. And he's asked me now, who should be my third? He's very close. Well, Aspen's the choice. If you have Aspen with a Ruyi Scepter, that's going to allow you to beat the game modes you're struggling with. Yeah, you've beaten Chapter 1-1, one, one, you've beaten Chapter 1-2 but you're struggling on chapter 1-3. you got these Garudas right here. They're annoying. You cannot brute force a Garuda because the moment you kill those Rogans, you heal those Garudas, and then you have to try and get another active skill out of your Mockman. That ain't happening. Those Garudas are going to do an active skill and kill you. I can even show you an example of how that actually looks. So we put Mockman on the back line, put Jara here too, try and tank with this puppet. I'll even throw in Phoenix for a bit of extra crit damage. Watch what happens. Exactly what I said. We go ahead and do an active. If Mockman kills those Rogans, it's just going to heal the Garudas. So there you go. Smashes out. Doesn't even kill any of the Rogans. So he doesn't have enough damage here to begin with. 
which is unfortunate. We're trying. We're dead, man. Wow. Absolutely minced. The funny thing is, I thought I was going to be able to show you what happens when we kill the Rogans. Didn't even get to that point. We just got shredded. Now, that kind of wave, you would really want Lord of Fear Aspen to crowd control and help. Because what would have happened there is if Lord of Fear Aspen had been able to crowd control those Rogans, they wouldn't have even done basic attacks in the first place. Which means the Garudas wouldn't have joined in. Because the other problem with Garuda is every time someone attacks, they join in. So with Aspen's crowd control, you reduce the number of attacks, which reduces the number of pings that Garuda does. So it works twofold for beating that kind of wave. So Aspen, definitely the pick. Then, of course, you want Jar in here as a tenant. That's totally fine. So I think those three, if you're wanting to build a Mockman, Mockman, Lord of Fear Aspen, Jara gives you everything you need. Now, let's talk about the rest of the heroes here real quick so we can review this account in more depth. Russell, is he good? No. What are you using for? Light Seal Lad. Not sure why he's on the account. Carry, beautiful hero, but is using dark food that could be a tenant for Mockman. Consider that. Your Mockman is weak, does not have a lot of damage, and we need more tenants. So if you can get those copies of Forkus, swap that carry to Forkus, put an attack attack stone on him, better tenant. Arania. Bad. Holmes Young. Awesome hero. Great crowd control. Actually worth keeping. I like this guy. In fact, if you'd have given him a proper energy artifact, he'd have been pretty good. Speed heal effect? Eh, it's a speed stone, it'll do. Could be better. But it's a home Jung. Can't go wrong with a home Jung. Sarja was great, and then you built Jara. In fact, would be better if you'd have had Lord of Fear Aspen, because then Sarja takes that spot anyway in Mockman's house. So almost did the right thing, then built the wrong Transcendence Hero. Eloise, great tenant. Tix, incredible, still in broken spaces for his attack steal. Just a good hero overall. Can't complain. What the hell is this? What? Why? Why do you have that on your account? How did you get a splendid kiss of ghost? And also, why is this not on your tenants? Kiss of ghost gives 25% attack and 14% HP. When in doubt, this is all four artifacts for your tenants. Like, Kiss of Ghost is the best tenant artifact outside of flags. And you say bond chests. You get three bond chests. So where did the fourth Kiss of Ghost come from? Oh, God. Yeah, I thought it was going well. And then this happened. It's not even good to run a Kiss of Ghost Splendid on ticks unless you're doing something weird in Seal Land, which is probably exactly what he was doing. But then at the same time... You have Eloise, right? She is the, the god of dealing with Seal Land. And then we have a puppet, which is fine. And then Itlaqua, I, I don't even think you need this anymore, really. However, if you did want to build Jara as a main homeowner, I guess you've got some tenants for that. So maybe that's why we have Home Jung Eloise. Oh, oh no. Oh no. That's exactly what happened. Did you build Jara as your main homeowner in the early game? You did? Wow. I figured it out, guys. That's why we have the Home Jung Eloise ticks in Ithaca. Wow. Okay. Little advice for everybody in chat and everyone at home on YouTube. Jara sucks as an early Transcendence hero for the exact reason I said she was bad earlier. If you do not have a full team all with Demon Bells, to energy feed her. She is trash. Pure garbage. Right? Well, this guy would sooner get a splendid kiss of ghost than a bunch of demon bells. We have a gilded purple fan? Wow! You just took all the artifact advice for early game players and threw it in the toilet. Oh, man. That's insane. Gilded purple fan... With two spare melodic strings that aren't even being used. Three spare melodic strings that aren't even being used. There's your Radiant Demon Bell. There's a crown, that's fine. Kiss a ghost. AMB! AMB! He's got so many artifacts, but none of them are good. Have you got... Wow! Does he have a spare melodic strings as well? He does! And a spare crown! So... If all those melodic strings were demon bells, 
If all those Augustus Magic Balls were Demon Bells. If all those Kiss of Ghosts were Demon Bells. You would have three splendid Demon Bells and Melodic Strings. And we don't even have a Rui Scepter on this account. The one artifact you need. So really, you should have splendid Rui, splendid Melodic Strings, and at least two splendid Demon Bells. Plus the Radiant that's already on Arania. Or whoever it was. Who's got the Radiant? Sarja. So, you might hear that as a free-to-play player and go, Yeah, yeah, but, but where the hell am I supposed to get artifacts from? I have friends who've played this game free-to-play and have Melodic Strings, Crown, three Demon Bells, and Rui Scepter, all at Splendid. It is totally possible. And that's with two Transcendent Heroes. That's in a year of playing. They give you artifacts, right? The Lunatic Asylum event, which we have right now, is a free artifact for getting up here. Look, it's right there. Easy peasy. Grab an artifact from that. Now, is that chest in your bag? Nope. So that means he's already opened it. What we've got here is a guy that has played long enough to have all the good artifacts he could possibly need and then just kind of decided not to get any of them. Apart from one melodic strings. So, really, there's another bit of advice for new players. Just get good artifacts and you'll be okay. You'll be absolutely fine. And you use the honor melodic strings. You got an artifact this week. And you used it on melodic strings. Why? You already have a splendid. What are you hoping to achieve? Is your logic really that you just want to have a splendid melodic strings on Jara? I mean, it would be better than this Punisher of Immortal. Should the very fact that trying to have Jara and Mockman with the melodic strings not point out to you that, that may maybe Jara isn't working and the issue is the Jara, not the fact she isn't wearing a melodic strings? If you'd have gone with Demon Bells, that would have given you the energy fee for the Jara that you need. So if you're watching this at home, hopefully you've found some things to make sure that if you build a Mockman, you don't make the same mistakes. Get those correct artifacts. Get that Rui Scepter. Prepare yourself so that when you do get to two Transcendence Heroes, you can build an Aspen. And then three Transcendence Heroes is absolutely brilliant. Yes, go with Jara. She's great. But there are things that you could have had, like a splendid flag for the Jara, like the energy feed. Things that would have given more weight to Mockman as a homeowner. We're lacking tenants, which we need you to build, and every way that you can possibly give this Mockman more power, whether it's more tenants, whether it's flag on the Jara, anything that improves that attack stat will give you more burst. Try and optimize his crit damage, and hopefully when you finally get all that stuff together, with a more powerful Mockman, and with some crowd control from a Lord of Fear Aspen, you can go ahead and fight things like Void Campaign. That's where your progress is going to come in. And that's the rule for any Mockman user. If enemies are winding you up, crowd control them. And if you can't kill them in one shot, try and get Mockman's attack bigger. That is the secret to winning with a Mockman. If you have any questions about a Mockman yourself, Drop them down in the comment section. Hopefully, you've learned something yourselves. And a lot of the time, people are like, hey, should I build a Vessa to heal my Mockman? Nope. Do I need a Rainier? Nope. You need to be building heroes that focus on pure damage or control. Once you've got the Jara, the Mockman, and the Lord of Fear Aspen, that's your three heroes, you then want to think about heroes that up your power. Halora for added crit damage potential. Natalie for added attack power. Freya for more survival. And that's when you start getting big numbers. And even then, you might argue it's best to switch to Jar at that point. But I'll leave that for another video. Anyway, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you in future content. Any questions, drop them in the comment section. Hopefully I or a member of the community will answer them and I will see you next time. Until then though, happy island.